So I'm here to speak on uh, Albumentations, the library that we did uh, that offers uh, fast and flexible image augmentations uh, to empower your uh, training pipelines for the uh, image. So um, while I'm standing here, um, I work uh, with a computer vision for almost eight years from now. I started with the classical computer vision with a C++ and uh, then switched to uh, Python and uh, deep learning. I uh, may work as the consultant. Um, uh, I also solve uh, Kaggle, currently Kaggle Master with uh, uh, 145 worldwide rating. Um, and also I contribute to open source projects like Albumentations, Catalyst, and uh, PyTorch Toolbelt. So um, how many of you work with the uh, image data in uh, machine learning? Raise hands. Awesome. Perfect. And uh, how many of you have enough data for your models? <laughs> that speaks for itself. Yes, uh, clearly, uh, lack of data is uh, one of the main problems that uh, we have since uh, it's usually can be expensive to get more data, usually it can be expensive to annotate it. And um, with Albumentations, we try to solve this problem by offering you an opportunity to uh, augment your data in a way so that it becomes um, more uh, diverse. But at the same time, uh, we try to keep the semantic of your images intact. So that, uh, like in this example, um, if you flip image, uh, change its color, brightness, it's still the same uh, class semantic. Um, but this uh, diversity of colors, uh, noise levels, uh, scale range, helps model to generalize better. So uh, to recap, uh, what we try to solve with image augmentation is a uh, lack of data, uh, lack of diversity, and uh, if the data is not enough or our model capacity is uh, too big and the model is overfitting. In this way, uh, we also want uh, image augmentations to be present to prevent overfitting of the model. And last but not least, if you're competing on a Kaggle. So um, on a Kaggle, you have a limited set of data, and uh, quite often it's uh, not allowed to get more extra data somewhere. So you have to work with what you have been given. And uh, image augmentation is a, a legal way to increase your training set. Um, so it helps to uh, increase how much samples do you, do you have by uh, artificially generating new samples on the fly while you're training a model. And uh, by, uh, let's say, rotating images or flipping them, you make your model to be invariant to these transformations. Uh, this acts as the regularization process during the model training and um, also enables you to use a so-called test time augmentation during the inference. Uh, that means that uh, instead of showing only one image to your model for the classification, let's say, uh, you can send um, original image and also flip it version of it, or rotated uh, version of it, or uh, let's say slightly change its brightness. And then you average the predictions of all n uh, images. And this uh, actually decreases the variance of the predictions and increase uh, the model accuracy. Um, so here is the results of how much image augmentation helps on ImageNet uh, competition. To whom uh, who is not familiar with uh, the ImageNet is um, probably most well-known uh, image classification challenge where you have to classify image into 1,000 of classes. And um, in a 2016, the ResNext model uh, had an accuracy of 80.9%, and they used a relatively small uh, set of image augmentations, like a random crops or flips or a change of the intensities of the uh, color channels. Um, and as we can see, uh, in the next years, the set of augmentations was uh, increasing, and as well as accuracy, 
And the currently state-of-the-art result for the efficient net B7 uses a set of 25 augmentation policies that was uh, found by another uh, reinforcement learning algorithm. And this um, improved the accuracy by four points, uh, which is a lot on this uh, competition. Uh, and uh, as an ablation study, um, without image augmentation, uh, for the ResNet 50, let's say, we have 76% uh, augmentation with only basic ones. With auto-augmentation, we have 77, just more than one point increase. And the same holds true for all other um, network architectures. So uh, this experiment shows that even with the same data, with the same model, with the same training pipeline, by just adding more augmentations, you can increase the model accuracy. Here's an example of uh, how the uh, augmented images look like. Uh, it turns out that um, it's not enough to show a simple example to the model to increase its uh, generalization uh, capacity. But uh, if image looks really weird and unnatural, uh, this is the way how the model likes uh, to train. And, uh, this is what has been learned during reinforcement learning policy for the auto augment paper. And yeah, as you can see, these uh, images looks really uh, off compared to their original counterpart. Um, so this uh, leads us to the question, how we can do this in a Python, right? So uh, most of the time, images in the memory are represented as a three-dimensional tensor with a width, height, and number of channels that contains just the pixel intensities for pixels. And uh, there are a number of libraries that uh, one can use to uh, modify this image. Of course, we can write uh, handcrafted Python code to manipulate with the pixels, uh, but uh, more often we want to something uh, already done for us, and therefore we have a general purpose libraries like a PLO or SkyKit image or a Python bindings to OpenCV library, which uh, provides a quite wide set of uh, image transformation functions that uh, can uh, offer us a sum set of the functionality that we want to use for the image augmentation. Um, but it's sort of low level image processing routines and we have to write a lot of additional code in order to make this on-the-fly image augmentation works easily in our training pipeline. So, um, and there exist uh, image augmentation libraries tailored specifically for the deep learning. One of them are um, probably most well-known is, is image AUG. Another one is the Torch Vision, and the official uh, library from the PyTorch team, and also Salt library that um, offers uh, kind of out-of-the-box image augmentations. But also there are quite a few problems with uh, these libraries. Um, first of all, for the general purpose images, uh, uh, general purpose libraries, we have to be uh, really skilled in the computer vision in general to be able to write those image augmentations that we want. And uh, this is uh, often error prone and it's hard to trace an error if you have a bug in your uh, image augmentation pipeline because it's uh, random by definition and each time you can have random uh, augmentation applied to your image and if there is some error in one of the transformation functions, uh, it's hard to find it unless you really know where to look for. Uh, second problem is that uh, quite often uh, you want to augment not only your image, but also a mask and the key points or the bounding boxes, depending on what your problem is. Uh, and uh, it turns out you also have to write this code to augment bounding boxes. And it's not so trivial as uh, one can think. Mm. Second, existing aug uh, augmentation libraries uh, provide, uh, let's say, it, limited a set of image augmentations that is um, not including uh, state-of-the-art augmentation transformation that has been published for the recent years. And uh, uh, ease of integration could be better, so to say. 
Um, that's why uh, at some point uh, during our Kaggle career, uh, we end up with an idea to share our um, development, our work that we've done uh, internally for uh, our own needs on the Kaggle competitions in the form of the open source library that everyone can use. And that's how we did augmentations. Um, it's currently uh, available on the GitHub, on the PyPy. Um, there is a support channel in uh, Open Data Science Slack. We have 4.3k stars on our GitHub, which shows the community adoptions. And uh, this is a core team of uh, developers who is uh, uh, developing the library and uh, maintaining the pull request. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm Eugene. Alex is also in uh, this room. Alex, raise a hand. Yeah. Clap to Alex. So um, um, highlights what we can offer you and why you want to use Albumentations. So um, it's really easy to use. Uh, we tried our best to uh, make the API uh, natural and easy to understand. Uh, we support a wide spectrum of augmentations. Currently, we count more than 70 different augmentations, which is a record among other libraries. We support augmentation of mask, bounding boxes, key points, etc. Uh, we are fast uh, because we don't use uh, Python code. Under the hood, we use OpenCV, which is uh, using C++ compiled code with uh, employees uh, processor capabilities like uh, SIMD and vectorization uh, to speed up image processing. Uh, we have a proven efficiency by uh, both on the production side, by adoption of, of companies, and by uh, use of the Kaggle competitions. And we also a uh, part of the PyTorch ecosystem. How do we see the process of the augmentation pipeline in the most efficient way? Uh, during our start of the train loop, we initialize our augmentation pipeline. This is a one-time job where we define uh, what order of augmentations we want to apply to a particular image sample. And during the training in the multiple processes, uh, we read an image from a disk, we augment it uh, with a randomly uh, generated set of the transformations, and then we make a batch that we use during the training. So it's simple as this. And uh, <clears throat> let's look at the code and the results of uh, how the augmentation looks like. So on the left, we have <clears throat> the short snippet that shows the initialization of the transformation pipeline. <clears throat> the Compose uh, is a class that accepts a list of the transformation that are applied sequentially. So at the first, uh, we apply a random crop to the input image that crops um, a square of uh, 2024 side from the original image. And then with a probability of a 50%, we apply the random flip uh, on the horizontal axis. And second and third, we apply a color augmentation in a HSV color space. <clears throat> um, and uh, Augmentation of an image is simple. We read uh, image from the disk. We uh, convert it to the RGB color space uh, since OpenCV <coughs> uh, under the hood uh, reads it in a by jar. And then we send this as a key value to the transform function. And this is a result uh, on the right of how the augmented image may look like. Clearly, if we uh, call this transform function multiple times, we will get different um, versions of the augmented image. Um, they maybe have different colors, different crop, can be flipped or not. And uh, this uh, non-deterministic way is exactly what we want during the training. Uh, more advanced example of uh, how to augment image and the mask simultaneously for the problems of the semantic segmentation. Um, the same pipeline, it doesn't change at all. We only add a second target to the transform function, which is a mask. 
And uh, when uh, transforming a mask, we want to preserve uh, the class labels, meaning that we cannot use uh, bilinear interpolation because it will corrupt uh, the labels, so that we apply only spatial transformation with the nearest interpolation that keeps the labels uh, uh, perfect. And uh, this is why we ensure that uh, both image and the mask after augmentation are consistent. This problem uh, is uh, quite often happens uh, when you write your augmentations manually with your own uh, in-house um, approach. And uh, we have all the code covered with unit tests to ensure the correctness of our augmentations. Uh, third example I wanted to show you is um, for the object detection problem. Let's say uh, pedestrian counting or uh, object detection in uh, the, you know, surveillance. Uh, in this case, when you're training YOLO or uh, retina net object detection, uh, you want to um, ensure your model can work with the object of a different scale, so that you want to uh, augment uh, samples with a different scale. And uh, we also support this as well. And uh, we have to make only a few changes actually to our training pipeline. Uh, first, we have to specify what the format of the bounding boxes we have. In this case, it, this is a COCO. Um, and then we pass the bounding boxes as additional target to the transform function. And as you can see on the augmented image, the bounding boxes is uh, consistent with the scene itself and how it should be, right? But the goal is to demonstrate to you that um, it's quite easy to apply the augmentations to the mixed set of targets depending on your needs. And last but not least, the key point augmentation like facial landmarks. Again, you specify the format of the key points, you pass them as additional target, and voila, you have the result. Of course, you can combine them. So you can send image, you can send mask at the same time with the bounding boxes, it will work perfectly. Um, so uh, I hope you convinced at the moment that uh, the library at least worth uh, giving a try. And uh, to recap, uh, we have more than 70 augmentations, which include uh, size augmentations, uh, cropping, color augmentations in the different color spaces, uh, affine and perspective transforms, uh, blurring, including Gaussian blur, motion blur, um, noise uh, for different models, like uh, simulating the camera sensor noise or just, just Gaussian noise, uh, optical distortions to uh, simulate uh, different lenses on uh, the camera, uh, generation of the random weather effects, which is uh, really cool augmentation for the training, uh, for the self-driving, let's say, and a set of other augmentations like um, to normalize your image uh, and uh, convert it to the tensor. So uh, creating uh, custom uh, pipelines uh, was a crucial uh, goal of this library because we as uh, uh, Kaggle uh, competitors want to experiment as fast as possible with a different uh, set of the image augmentations. And uh, the way we uh, create our uh, augmentation pipeline uh, allow us to quickly uh, change the parameters we want and the order of augmentations uh, we want to have. And this allows us to create a really uh, deep uh, augmentation pipeline, like an example about me. So uh, here we have a lot of augmentations like a random change of brightness and contrast, random change of the gamma of the image, uh, random affine transformation and uh, dropout of the masks and the noise and uh, color, sh uh, color space changes and some elastic transformations. So it's really complex uh, pipeline, but uh, it shows that this um, like infinite amount of the images that you can generate from a limited set of your data. Um, one example of uh, the image augmentation for the uh, semantic segmentation uh, problem. This is an example where we uh, have a satellite image uh, and we want to detect all the buildings in uh, this uh, scene. 
uh, and during the training uh, we can in change uh, we can augment the image in order so that let's say we want to erase some images from the scene it turns out this augmentation works really well and prevents the model uh, to overfit a particular combination of buildings by randomly erasing uh, instances of the uh, houses. We can also add some random folk, uh, do some elastic transformations, and this also increased the model uh, generalization. Um, another good uh, augmentation example is from the Data Science Bowl 2018, where a participant had to uh, detect individual nuclei in the microscopy image. Uh, here, this is a, a augmentation set from the winning solution of uh, that uh, of, the, of the team. So they, they used uh, different combination of the random crops, noise, uh, RGB color shift. And uh, by uh, having this set of transformation, they was able to uh, uh, perform better than other competitors and win uh, quite a big prize there. I will cover that later a bit. But uh, the bottom line is uh, even a small set of augmentation can uh, give you a significant boost in uh, terms of the model accuracy. Uh, another case study is this last year uh, Kaggle challenge for detecting the uh, diabetic retinopathy uh, from the uh, fundus image photography of an eye. Um, this is a really heavy Im image augmentation pipeline since the amount of data in that competition was limited and uh, a participant has been struggling to find a way to prevent models to overfit. So um, this, uh, um, this augmentation pipeline is really hard so it adds a lot of a blur a lot of transformation that is usually very unnatural to happen in an eye but it turns out it uh, helped it a lot to uh, increase the model uh, performance so here's an, a result of augmented images how they look like and you, you can see they all have a different colors they are not round they are distorted um, normal and even uh, an eye with a disease doesn't usually look like that. So this is really un unnatural images. And you can wonder, right, like, is it possible to train actually to get some uh, useful signal out of uh, such a huge uh, augmented images? Um, it turns out, yes. Uh, by adding this set of augmentations, uh, the public leaderboard score increased by 130 places. And this is, was something where in the uh, silver silver medal zone, and uh, by only adding more more heavier augmentations. Um, one uh, a good table that we have in our repository. I hope you can read from it. But this is a hall of fame that uh, everyone is encouraged to open the pull request if you have used our library and. Uh, uh, took some um, place and have an open source code to share. And we have this Hall of Fame where participants can uh, highlight their achievements using our library. And as you can see, uh, there are many top performing teams from the past year uh, competitions on the Kaggle uh, that was using our library. Uh, the slides will be shared and the link below points to the exact uh, same table with the links to the solution so that you can learn from it uh, what the set of augmentation has been used and how. And again, uh, a lot of first places, a lot of top 10 places has been using our library and this is only uh, showing the Kaggle platform. There are other uh, uh, platforms like uh, ZingD and uh, Signate and uh, Topcoder that is not included here, but again, bottom line is um, this library uh, helps real people to earn real money on the uh, competitive machine learning uh, using the image augmentation technique. And uh, we believe uh, augmentations offer the best spectrum of the features that uh, you can use. Um, speaking of the adoption, uh, the library has been used by Lyft, X5, Retail Group, NetHub, Recursion Pharma, EveryPixel companies, and uh, 
if you are business and uh, you're also using augmentations, uh, we really encourage you to say hi and we'll include you in, in this list. Uh, we're also a part of the PyTorch ecosystem. We have been adopted recently. And this means that uh, integration with the PyTorch uh, training uh, framework is uh, really easy. And in fact, we all uh, in the core team use the PyTorch as our main um, deep learning framework. So to us, this is a great achievement so that uh, uh, we are on the list. We also integrated with the Kaggle notebook so that you don't have to do anything addition uh, to have implementations uh, in your Kaggle notebooks. And um, finally, uh, we are integrated quite well with the Catalyst uh, deep learning framework, which is, uh, offers reproducible experiment uh, management and training, uh, again, over the PyTorch. So, um, and um, of course, the library uh, is nothing without the, our contributors that open the pull requests, that open issues, that helps us to improve the library. So, uh, thanks you all for the help. And uh, without you, it would be impossible to create such a library. So, thanks for everyone. Um, I feel I run a bit quicker out of time. So um, the QR code points to the presentation slides. If someone wants to take a photo, you will be able to uh, have the local copy. Um, I'm happy to answer your questions if you have any, and thanks for the attention.